In earlier videos, I analyzed two of H.P. Lovecraft's classic tales, The Call of Cthulhu and The Shadow Over Innsmouth. Here are six techniques that I thought could be very useful for any writer writing in any genre. Number one, facts that change their meaning. This is one of the strongest conventions of the detective story, and Lovecraft uses it as well. You're given facts at the beginning, but as the tale goes on, the facts take on new meaning. In The Shadow Over Innsmouth, we're told that the unnamed protagonist is taking a coming-of-age journey around New England, so we think he's just sightseeing. And the narrator takes great pains to impress us upon how alien the devolving people of Innsmouth seem to him. We take these as facts, but by the end of the tale, we learn that the narrator is also devolving or evolving into one of these creatures as well. Now, coming of age has taken on a whole new meaning. Number two, skeptical protagonist. I believe that to gain access to any fantastic story, we need a skeptical and, for lack of a better term, normal character. In Star Wars, this is Han Solo. He doesn't believe in the Force, any all-mystical thing controlling his destiny. He drives a beater car and he's in debt up to his eyeballs. He's saying and doing what a normal person would do if we were in that situation. Lovecraft's protagonists are all going mad, dealing with situations that are beyond the limits of human sanity. But the entire time they argue against it. And when they lose their argument, they go mad. Simply by having the character saying that he or she doesn't want to believe something is true makes it easier for us to suspend disbelief. Number three, informational suspense. In many of his stories, H.P. Lovecraft doesn't use traditional cliffhangers or even suspense in the modern sense of the word. He's after this weird effect, that creepy cosmic horror feeling. But he's still got the problem of keeping the reader interested and engaged with the tale. So how does he do it? It's what I'm calling informational suspense. Since you're hearing the tale from a single narrator, you know the narrator has survived the events. But these are tales of investigators uncovering terrible truth. A Lovecraft story is often driven by the need to know what's really going on as much as it is by, uh, by the traditional plot. Just like the main character is dragged into the mess by the need to know, that's what keeps us reading. Number four. Description Grounding Fantasy Lovecraft's description is very detailed and very precise. He writes of science in conflict with the unknown, and the more real he can make his places and scenarios, the more fantastic he can make the rest of the story. Think of it this way. If I write a story about dragon riders, it's fantastic and unrealistic. But if I spend sufficient time and effort describing how a dragon saddle works, and how it has to be made of different material than leather, if I tell you the story of the first person to fall off a dragon and die because the leather was rubbed through against the scales, now it becomes more real. In Call of Cthulhu, Lovecraft does this very thing in an incredibly fantastic sequence. A steamship stumbles upon the recently risen Riley and Cthulhu. Lovecraft takes pains to talk about the ship needing to get a full head of steam up as they try to escape. In one sense, there's no need to do this. This could all just be a nightmare sequence. But since he takes such pains to ground the fantastic in the physical reality, it becomes more real to us. Number five, powerful images. In every Lovecraft story, there are keyframe moments that stay with you. Now, some of this has to do with being his being a disturbing and disturbingly talented visionary. But even if you're not a visionary, you can use powerful and specific images throughout your tale. Here's one of my absolute favorites from The Shadow Over Innsmouth. At last we lost sight of Plum Island and saw the vast expanse of the open Atlantic on our left. Our narrow course began to climb steeply, and I felt a singular sense of disquiet in looking at the lonely crest ahead, where the rutted roadway met the sky. It was as if the bus were about to keep on its ascent, leaving the sane earth altogether and merging with the unknown arcana of the upper air and cryptical sky. The smell of the sea took on ominous implications, and the slight driver's bent, rigid back and narrow head became all the more hateful. As I looked at him, I saw that the back of his head was almost as hairless as his face, having only a few straggling yellow strands upon a gray, scabrous surface. Number six. 
story within story to create depth. Lovecraft uses tales within tales to add depth and reality. In Call of Cthulhu, this is the primary way the story works. The narrator barely even qualifies as a protagonist by modern standards. All he does is read other people's accounts and react to them, ultimately going mad. But because we're getting the tale from one point of view, Lovecraft can jump around the whole globe very quickly and doesn't have to waste words setting up a new character each time. For more story analysis and tips like this, go ahead and subscribe. It's okay. I'll wait. You know, and while we're both here, you might as well just click that little bell that notifies you when there's a new video. Okay. Thanks, and thanks for watching.